What's happening, everybody? My name is Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I usually give my analysis, my hot takes, and my reactions to the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. But on this episode, we're going Monty Python style and doing something completely different. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you have heard me say ad nauseum that I'm a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician, and I have been those things for the last 20 years. In those 20 years, I feel that I have identified five mistakes that lots and lots of private music teachers make. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be talking about it through the lens of a drum teacher, but I think these are applicable to everyone. Now, why are we private music teachers? Because we're trying to pay the electric bill and be available for that gig that you may get called for. It's a very advantageous job to have if you are trying to stay a gigging musician and not have to live on your girlfriend's couch. How do we stay being able to pay that electric bill? By getting those students and more importantly, retaining those students. That's the number one thing that you are trying to do. You're trying to foster interest in the instrument. You're trying to foster them to actually practice. And man, let's be honest, a lot of them don't. But at the end of the day, and I really hate that cliche and I can't believe I just said it, we're trying to keep that student for as long as possible so they will pay us. Here are, in my opinion, the top five mistakes that private music teachers make. So number one, don't dress like a slob. I will preface this section with this. I teach one of the places that I teach it's a music school connected to a music uh, store and we have female teachers there and they never ever do this our female teachers are always dressed nice now for you dudes out there man y'all have got to leave the faded Motley Crue tour t-shirt at the house because here's why we're trying to come off like professionals and that's just not professional you are dealing with parents let's be honest you know most of our students I would say 75 percent of my clientele they're under the age of 18 they're they're school kids right so you're dealing with the parents that's who's paying you and you want to come off not like the guy who just got stoned on your couch and came into work. You want to look like a professional. Keep in mind, these parents deal with these kind of people all the time. There's tennis coaches, baseball coaches, and, and uh, jiu-jitsu uh, instructors, and all of those people come off like they're professional, and they usually dress the part. Do not come into lesson and look like a complete slob. Again, women, you all don't do this. This is strictly a male problem. Leave the pork-out shirt that you have at the house and dress nice. The story that I always tell when I'm talking about this is uh, my band opened up for the Del McCurry Band, which is this bluegrass band. Side note, if you don't know who the Del McCurry Band is and you're a bluegrass fan, then you're probably not a bluegrass fan. He's one of my favorite artists ever, but that's not the point. I have a really good friend. He's Jamaican, and he doesn't know anything about bluegrass. He'd never seen Del McCurry ever, and we had already played our show, and we were in the crowd, and we were watching Del McCurry, and if you've ever seen Del McCurry and his band come out, they are dressed to the nines in tailored expensive suits my buddy from Jamaica said I don't know anything about that guy but he looks like he's somebody and that is what you're trying to do with your parents you're trying to show them that you are successful at what you do and you can afford a nice shirt fellas clean your act up and look like you're a professional I for one never have this problem So, number two, don't be a music snob. This is one of the most egregious mistakes that private music teachers make on a regular basis. I came to this conclusion when I was talking to an old bass player friend of mine who also is a private uh, teacher, and we were just talking about the lame songs we end up having to teach our kids. And I don't know, I was probably bitching about like, teaching like a skillet song or something and he was talking about he had this young little girl she was like nine ten came in and she wanted to learn a taylor swift song and he was like well you know i just told her we don't do that around here two problems with that first 
they're paying you to do just that teach the kids what they're interested in and the second part of that is dude you're an old man and that little kid now just thinks that you're old and you're lame your musical taste has nothing to do with that student now i'm not saying that you can't try to influence them and try to turn them on to things that you think that they will like but if they come in and they want to le learn that jason Mraz song jason Mraz, don't be like hey man let's listen to yyz because it's going to go over their head. They're not ready for it. They're not there yet. And this is what I told my bass player friend, who's actually one of my best friends. It's like, dude, when you were like 13 and 14 being a musician and starting out playing, you weren't listening to Weather Report. You were listening to Alice in Chains like the rest of us. So quit acting like you've been this great jazz scholar your whole life. Because let's be honest, there are no jazz scholars in this day and age that starts out listening to Kind of Blue when they're nine. So if that eight or nine year old kid comes in and they want to play a Taylor Swift song, or if they want to come in and they want to play Imagine Dragon song, man, that's your job, do it. You're not going to turn that student on by telling them, hey, your musical tastes suck, and here's why my musical tastes are better. Because here's something my bass player friend didn't really recognize or understand. You're an old figure in this person's life. They don't think you're cool. I know that your friends who are citizens who are married with kids think that you're a cool guy, but this nine-year-old thinks you're old and lame. So why come off that way? What you really need to do is foster, and I'm going to say that word a lot in this video, foster their love of music if they want to learn a Taylor Swift song. I say that because I teach a lot, uh, I work with a lot of guitar teachers and anytime a new Taylor Swift record comes out, it's what you're hearing from all the studios because all the girls with acoustic guitars want to learn those songs. You better teach that kid that song. Do not turn them off to music just because you want to come off like some great professor of music. And from a capitalist standpoint, they're paying you to do so. So do it. Number three, and this is a nuts and bolts teaching style thing, and it goes to how kids learn in today's day and age, and it is, don't just say, because I said so. You have to give that student an example and a reason to do something. I came to this conclusion when I was talking to another drum teacher and he was trying to impress me with how thorough he was with his teaching. And he was like, you know, when my student comes in first lesson, after we learn how to hold the drumsticks, we learn how to do double strokes. And that's what we do for the first lesson. And I thought, man, that sucks. Because when I got a drum set, all I wanted to do was to play along with a Green Day song or a rancid tune. And if I'd have went into my drum teacher and the first thing that I did was I'm finding another drum teacher. Now, that's not to say that you don't challenge them. This has to do with drum teaching more than the other instruments, at least for me. Rudiments, things like that. Do not start trying to pull out a paradiddle on their first or second lesson because they don't know enough to appreciate why that's important. And when you do pull that out, you need to go have recorded examples of why it's important to know that thing. When I teach double strokes, the, uh, I always pull out uh, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover and paradiddles too because there's a left-handed paradiddle in that groove but there's double strokes in that groove i will let them listen to carter beaufort and and let them see the double stroke stuff that he does on the hi-hat if they're a marching band kid i just pull put on some dci and go you need to know your double strokes because of that give that student a reason to learn that concept because no one's going to pay a cover charge to come see a drummer do this so why would that be the first thing to give a student to do? It will turn that student off because it's boring. And let's be honest, the beginning 
study of any instrument is pretty boring. It doesn't get exciting until you get enough capability to be able to actually play a song. So until they get there, you need to find every possible way to keep them interested and keep them practicing. Do not start out your guitar lesson and teach them the Phrygian mode because they have no frame of reference and they don't understand it. This is a big, big problem with beginning, drum, uh, beginning teachers is not prioritizing what is important for a beginner to learn. Man, the first thing that I try to get to, a kid to do when they come in, you know, I teach them how to hold the drumsticks and how to move the drumsticks. I get them to learn how to play rock beat number one. You know, we learn how to play this. So the first thing that I try to do with my students, like first lesson, I teach them how to hold the drumsticks, teach them how to move the drumsticks, teach them how to count a little bit, try to get them to connect their brain with their hands by going one and two and three and four and, and then I immediately take them to the drum set and I start working on teaching them how to play drum beat number one. And then, as soon as they have that mastered, I usually have them play uh, that Tom Petty song into the great wide open because it's really, really slow and it's just that groove. And I get them operating the instrument while the music is playing. And you will just see their kid, the kid just light up like, oh my God, you know, I've just got here and I'm already playing along with a song. That's what you're trying to do as a teacher. You're trying to get that student to be interested in the instrument. You're trying to get them to practice and to apply themselves because in the long run, those are the kids who stick around the longest, and those are the kids who pay you the longest. And that's what we're really doing here. We're trying to get paid. So, again, do not just say, do this because I said so, because if you do that, you will shut that student down. Number four don't become a fossil as you get older this is a very easy mistake to make it is your job to stay current with what's cool and what the students like because if you're going to be that 70s rocker guy who wants to teach all your kids boston yeah you'll get some kids that are into that but you're just going to come off again old and lame you must keep up with today's music Today's uh, reaction video was to 21 Pilots that I did earlier. And, you know, I'm probably going to listen to more of them so I can know about them because I have a lot of students coming in sh wanting to play 21 Pilot songs. So I'm going to do that. Don't be a fossil. You will not keep students. There was a drum teacher in my hometown that I kind of overtook his business. And all these kids that came to me after they had been with him for a little while, all complained that all he wanted to do was to teach them Credence Clearwater Revival songs. I would say two things. First, learn CCR because that band rules. But second, around here, what you're influenced by is what I will teach you because you're paying me to do that. And that is how you keep be being a professional music teacher. And number five, and this one I think is of utmost importance, do not be clinical in your teaching. The better way to say it is make a personal connection with your students. Uh, I came to this one through a guitar teacher that I had got hired on at my store where I work at. And he came up to me after, you know, a few months and he was just like, man, he's like, I'm not getting it. He's like, these students are not responding to what I'm doing. I don't think I'm good at this. And the thing is, this guitar player is phenomenal. He is an amazing guitar player. I say on a regular basis that I think he's the best guitar player in the world. But he's great. And he just didn't work out as a, as a guitar teacher because he wasn't personable with strangers. He was not able to make a connection with his children. You know how much goodwill I have 
garnered by just talking about video games and sports and other things outside of the music realm with my students. Like, man, I've got students that we talk about Stranger Things every time they come in. I've got students who we talk about pro wrestling with. I've got students who we talk about baseball with. I've got students we talk about Marvel movies with. And just that little extra time to get to know your student, you become less of this stranger in this studio who plays music and more like a mentory type friend that they actually enjoy hanging out with. Just by being able to talk about wrestling and talk about comic books and all the things that us man children, adult children like, has enabled me to make connections with my students and they are more likely to receive what I'm trying to give them because they think of you as someone that's a friend that's cool and they want to hang out with you and they want to play music because you're helping them. That's such a small little thing and, and if you're not you know personable with strangers you're going to have a hard time with being a private music teacher because I hang out with 55 very different people and children all week and I try to make a personal connection outside of the music realm with each one and I believe that it helps me retain those students over a long period of time and that's what this whole video is about trying to give you a little information to keep that money coming in because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. So there you go, the top five mistakes that private music teachers make. If you enjoyed that, please give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell. Please feel free to comment, like, and share. And remember, keep practicing until it's easy.